Hi, my name is Chef Desmond. I am from Fire Grill. Today, we're here to talk about how do you up your barbecue game. So I can see Grill Master on your chef flat, mm -hmm. <laughs> which means I'm in very safe hands. Absolutely. You know, the barbecue pits are opening up, yes. right? And it's a great time to share, you know, how do you how do you go back into that hobby of, yes. of cooking? I, Genevieve Lowe, cannot barbecue to save her life. You need to talk me through exactly how we're going to do this. Sure, absolutely. And we've got two types of charcoal over here. This is the regular mangrove charcoal that you would you would typically use with an open barbecue pit. And here we have a very solid briquette. So the difference between the two is that this is compressed, which puts out a very nice high even heat. The regular mangrove charcoal puts out very high heat, but they at the same time die down very quickly. With very high heat, you essentially burn the outside of the food, right. but you don't quite cook the inside. You don't want to cook over direct heat fire. You want to cook over embers. Right. So what we have here is the most easy, easiest way to light up the charcoal. This is called a chimney starter. Okay. Right, and it's so simple. We just have to put the pour the charcoal right. in there. Put a couple of like fire starters below. Right. So once the fire starter is going, right, we'll just put the chimney over, and now we wait. But what if we don't have a chimney starter? Right. So if you don't have a chimney starter, the you know the traditional way would be to stack up your charcoal and put a couple of fire starters below, and then we'll do the same trick. To do the same trick, but you will get your hands quite dirty. When do you know you're ready? All right. So um, typically with a chimney, I would wait until it's about seventy to eighty percent ash over. If you're using the pyramid style, then it will be about the same, right? When you see seventy to eighty percent light up, right? That will be a good time to start um, setting up your gear. Okay. Um, the most natural thing to do for most people is to cook very thin cuts of meat, yes. right? Because in their mind, it's the easiest to the cook. The fastest. The fastest. Yes. Uh, there's not too much guesswork that goes in there. Uh, but on the on the contrary, it's actually better and less stressful to cook thicker cuts of meat. Right. And thicker cuts of vegetables. Okay. Because then you don't have to stress yourself on whether it's cooked or is it overcooked or it's not cooked. Right. You let it go, let it do its thing, and then you come back. Okay. The first thing we've got to do is really to oil the food. Okay. Right? A lot of times we end up oiling the barbecue. Yes. Which is not a good thing. That's another tip. <laughs> I think you're right. People think of just oiling the barbecue but not the food. Yep. So right. what happens when you oil the barbecue is that too much oil drips down into the charcoal. It creates fire because oil is a fuel. Right. right? And that fire ends up burning your food. Right. Okay. okay. Think of seasoning like glitter. Okay. Right? And as a kid, you play with glitter and that needs to stick to glue. So the oil acts as the glue that allow that seasoning to stick to the food. Got it. Alright, so now that the charcoal is light up, we're going to yeah. pour it out. Before we pour it out, we've got to first understand how we're going to set up the grill. Alright. Right. Um, so what we want to do is, we want to have more charcoal on one side of the grill. Okay. And then it slowly tapers down into very little at the other end. Right. So this way, it gives you very high heat on one side and very low heat on the other. Okay. And you have a middle, sort of medium heat in the middle. So now you can see there's hardly any fire at this point. Yes. It's just heat. Yes, that's right? a good thing, right? That's a good thing. Okay. Because you don't want that fire to Yeah, to you don't rage. want those like crazy flambe kind of. Yes. Okay. So you want to always cook over, over such embers. But at this point of time, right, it's really slow. The thing that takes the longest to cook needs to go on first. Right. Right. So things that tech typically has a bone. And we don't want to go straight on high heat because right. that will end up resulting in a, in a char outside and a raw inside. Got it. Once we cook this pretty much 70% of the way through, we're going to move it to the high heat Got to get it. that crispiness going. It's about having a little bit of patience and love. <laughs> I like that. Patience and love. It's very important. It comes through. Yeah. And 
then we're gonna put on the steak. Now, yes. remember this is a thick part of steak. So before you cook, you wanna pretty much push them together so that it becomes a thick steak right. again. So the thicker it is going on the grill, the better. Yeah. Got it. That's always my go-to. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Okay, noob question again. It looks done. Is it done? I don't know. We've got to use a meat thermometer to find out. Ah, okay. So these meat thermometers are very, very, a very good investment, right? Yes, Because you can pretty much use them on anything. Yep. Right, yep. at home or it doesn't have to be a barbecue. Correct. I call it the walk of shame. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you bring the food to the table and it's not quite there yet. You're like, and oh. And then you're like taking yes. it back to the kitchen. So this will prevent all walks of shame. Pretty much. And the way to use the meat thermometer yes. is really go in from the side. Every protein has got a, a temperature in which it's safe to eat. For white meats, it's about 75 to 80 degrees. For red meat? For red meat, you start off at 50 degrees. That's okay. where. Okay. And then you plus 5 degrees every time you want it. You want it to go. Yeah. Right. So if you notice, the zucchini is also quite cut pretty thick. Yeah? Yes. It helps get that get the caramelization on the outside and keep, keep the crunch on the inside. Yeah. You know what, Desmond, I feel like the biggest takeaway I've got from you today is keep it thick. Keep it thick. That's the way we like it. <laughs>